So apparently it's pointless to try and describe a woman. Um, she doesn't seem to want to go down a rabbit hole describing a woman. I mean, how does that act even work? Belinda, help me out here, for heaven's sake. Oh, my God. Look, if an elected politician can't define what a woman is, either because they're a lily-livered coward or because they genuinely don't know what a woman is, they should be nowhere near power. In fact, any MP who can't define what a woman is needs to resign immediately because they're supposed to represent at least half their constituents on the basis that they're women. And how are they going to do that if they don't know what one is? This is the same Yvette Cooper, Mike, who came out with a book in 2019 titled She Speaks, The Power of Women's Voices. Oh, my right? goodness. Fast forward three years and she's like, oh, sh don't say the woman word. Don't ask me what a woman is. Rabbit holes. <laughs> it's so complicated. I mean, what is happening? Is some, are they in being injected with some brain numbing toxins over the last three years? They're sounding at utterly mad. And it's not just Yvette. Of course, David Lammy came out saying women who refuse males in their safe spaces are dinosaurs. Kia self-combusted in a contortion of lather and knots when he was uh, asked about whether women have cervixes and he was like, don't use the phrase, only women have cervixes. Labour is riddled from Lisa Nandy to Rebecca Long-Bailey with, with MPs who have no idea what a woman is. And if they, if, if they do dare say they think it's a thought and a feeling, that completely erases women as, as a sex group and erases all our protections. Except may I just uh, champion Rosie Duffield here. She's a Labour MP that has stuck her neck out and said what a woman is. And of course, she got death threats and was hounded and couldn't even turn up to her Labour conference because she was so uh, terrified of being hurt. And, and Labour deserted her, obviously. But that's the thing. I mean, Annalise Dodds put a tweet out the other day, which is even more confusing, where she said that they were going to raise women up. And I thought, well, that's all very well, but if you're going to raise them up, surely, one, you should be able to define what they are, and two, maybe it might be a good idea to actually have a woman leader, which the Labour Party seems to have singularly failed to do over the course of the last several decades. <laughs> Even, you know, it was just over 100 years ago in, in 1919 when we had the first woman MP take her seat in Westminster, Nancy Astor, and the feeling very much then was, yes, we finally have someone who can represent uh, sex-based crime, sex-based health issues, a woman in Parliament. Now in 2022, we've got these women MPs not able to even say what a woman is now and refusing to defend women's protections. If you can't define a woman, you can't protect women. And because of our female biology, we do need certain protections in changing rooms, swimming areas, in, in prisons, in rape refuges, and Labour seems to determine to remove them. I'm sorry, it's getting a bit creepy yeah. because what kind of men and women want to remove protections from vulnerable women and allow males access? Well, I mean, the other problem they've got, of course, it was International Women's Day this week. You can imagine um, the panic that was setting out in Labour Party headquarters. Going, oh, my God, it's International Women's Day. What are we going to do? We don't know. Um, <laughs> let's all just hide under the table and not say anything. Annalise Dodds apparently went on to Women's Hour, which you would think would be fairly clearly defined. Um, yeah. But she then was unable to answer the question, how do you define a woman as well? <laughs> getting a little bit uh i mean listen it's funny if it wasn't true um i think it has real consequences for women i think this is actually a criminal attack on women's rights but labor uh, uh, uh cloaking it in kindness uh, and and trying to be nice to people um i don't want my daughters my four girls being groomed to believe it's women to males the right to access their changing rooms and bathrooms and this is what labor is peddling mm. um so unfortunately it is in the tory party as well caroline notes crispin blunt theresa may peddles the self id too so i just wish there was some a politician with a backbone that stood up put this debate to bed and said trans women are trans women women are women we need to protect women in single sex spaces let that be the end of it and isn't but it interesting that in in sort of real world time we're also dealing with a refugee crisis in which an awful lot of women and children are leaving a war zone uh, seeking refuge in western europe nobody seems to be asking the question whether they are all in fact women or whether some of them are women so whether some of them want to be identified as men you know no, nobody's having that conversation uh, in the queues to get on the trains 
Yeah, and no one's saying to the, the, the men who are being kept in the Ukraine, saying you have to stay and fight. Oh, you know, but if you identify as a woman, you can you can no. miss out on that. You cannot identify out of your sex. Otherwise, women wouldn't be raped. There'd be no FGM. Men wouldn't be forced to be go, go into the military. Um, so it, it, it's it's peddling a fantasy. And Labour have obviously been seduced by it and signed up to it. But it's faux feminists like Sadiq Khan oh, yes. and uh, David Lammy and all these nitwit pillocks who come on going this you know we need to keep women safe after sarah everard we need to protect women also let's remove all their protections in every safe space area they have and allow any male to access it if they say they're a woman um it's hypocritical they're they're not feminists at all that it's an anti-woman party in fact anyone who wants to erase women as a group uh, are, are also proclaiming how anti-women they are and we just need to call them out for it mike yes well have you seen the latest from sadiq khan and if you've noticed the latest poster which has started appearing on the transport for london on the underground signed off by the Mayor of London and Transport for London, apparently staring um, has now been outlawed. So you're not allowed to stare at anyone on the tube. I mean, <laughs> look, I, I, I mean, I sort of know what they're trying to get at here, but this is what it says. It says, intrusive staring of a sexual nature is sexual harassment and is not tolerated. Oh uh, <laughs> sorry, I mean, how are you going to define staring? If you can't even define a woman, what are you staring at? I don't know. Who is that over there? Is that a woman? No, I wasn't staring at her. She's not a woman. How do I know she's a woman? I don't know. I mean, just talk, about, her? talk about I rabbit know. holes. I mean, you know, it's amazing, isn't it? But, Mike, also think of all the hungover people on the tube. I remember many a morning getting up and just staring, not realising I was actually staring at someone, but just kind of like having that onion eye hangover stare. I'd be done every morning I went to work. You um, would. It, it's nonsense. It's first world, spoiled, narcissistic, privileged rubbish. We should be concentrating on the truth and facts over feelings. Um, stop this gender nonsense. Helping women, girls, boys, men, and, and recognising their sex. COVID hit men. Far worse than it hit women yeah. because of their male biology. They can't identify out of that as much as we can't identify out of getting cervical cancer. But it is lies that, uh, that these MPs are now peddling as truth or they're too cowardly to yeah. say the truth. But, you know, it's not, just the, it's not just the MPs. I actually saw a doctor, um, a male doctor, uh, uh, on a, a BBC breakfast programme describing people with prostates. Oh, no. I'm going... <laughs> So what sort of people have prostate? Would you suggest that they might be men wouldn't have prostates, don't they? I mean, I don't think women do. Oh, you don't, can't say that. But, I mean, talking yeah. of the staring things, you remember Metro newspaper used to have a little yeah. column. I don't know if they probably don't anymore because they probably hate crime. Yeah. But they used to have a little column where people would send in their notes because they'd have seen somebody on the tube and they'd looked at them and they hadn't managed to sort of hook up and they'd go, you know, to the girl who was wearing the green dress and eating the cheese sandwich, you know, I was the guy looking at you and smiling, you know, this is my, you know, and that's how people meet, isn't it? Yeah, and it's and it's quite romantic. And to be honest, it's also again constantly this infantilizing of women. Like we can't deal with a stare. I mean, come on, we're not these pathetic paper dollies who swoon at the idea of a man looking at us for more than three seconds. No, that's not true. Because well, you do quite... swoon when I stare at you. I've seen it. I think, apart from you, you're quite right. Well, I'm only human. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> But it is, it's making us out to be children. We can fight. There are certain areas we need the law to step in, certain protections we need, which Labour are very keen to remove from us and other uh, self-IDing MPs are keen to remove from us. Very few protections. Otherwise, we can stand up for ourselves on a lot of these occasions. Why, why can't we say to a man, please stop staring at me? Yeah. Or well, what are you staring at, you numb nuts, or whatever you want well, to call it? Well, also, them. it's quite a compliment. I mean, ladies of my age, you know, I don't mind it so much. Well, listen, I mean, I was on the tube yesterday, right? I was travelling back from uh, my trip to the West End, and a woman literally hurled herself at me because it went to, it came to a stop suddenly. It was very busy, and she sort of grabbed my arm. And um, I said, uh, she said, oh, sorry. I said, don't worry, women are throwing, always throwing themselves at me on the tube. And she just burst out laughing. We had a very funny conversation. I went home, she went home. It was, it was you know, an, in, an engaging a moment on, on, on London transport, you know. Men and women are perfect company for each other. I think the vast majority, majority of us see the good in each other. We want romance, we want love, we want relationships. We don't want men constantly hammered and their flaws highlighted all the time Where while women suddenly get away with all our flaws. Who, what feminist movement ever talks about how bitchy women are to each other at work or, or how unkind we can be? You know, look at all the women at the moment championing male swimmers and female sports. You know, right. women can be real enemies to women as well, but that's rarely mentioned.
mentioned, I think the vast majority of us, as you said, love a laugh, love a bit of flirting, think it's all harmless. I just hope it's not taken away from us. No, exactly right. And one final question. I mean, the Labour Party might not be able to define what a woman is, but can you define what the Labour Party is? <laughs> Well, I can define what it used to be. It used to be to represent the working class and all their issues. Now I think it is a sort of an Islington dinner party for former like foreign office lovies and celebs. A bit of a Hugh Grant thrown in there. Um, and I think it represents anything that's very posh and privileged and narcissistic yeah. and has lost all reality. Truth is unimportant. I think it would be a disaster if Corbyn got in uh, in 2019. Thank God they didn't. But no, I think the Labour Party is like a twiffle. Mm. That's how I describe it. The only people I know that are in favour of Labour Party policies actually are the sons and daughters of the wealthy, people who have got, you know, sort of uh, Land Rovers and houses in the Cotswolds. And it's just ridiculous how it's become this kind of parody of itself, isn't it? Well, it is, and unfortunately, um, actually, it has. Dis uh, the Brexit, Brexit, obviously uh, confirmed that Labour had turned their backs on democracy. It's turned its back on free speech, on on uh, also Britain's place in the world. They're so self-loathing. You know, they're the ones that jump on every single Britain bashing train that they can. Mm. It's almost they delight and salivate at it, if the UK does badly at something, and they're trying to put a few flags in the background when they talk now. Yeah. But we. We all know that that's not true. And it is shame. It is very sad because I once respected the Labour Party. It's now become a joke. Um, and we needed strong opposition over COVID. We needed strong uh, a strong opposition over all these, uh, uh, you know, gender things going on. And they're not, they're not punching any weight. No. No, they have absolutely no clue what is happening. But Belinda, as ever, thank you so much for being a woman. Uh, thank you for identifying as a woman. And thank you for talking to me as a woman.